The latest online tournament organised by the Play Magnus Group has begun. 16 of the top players in the world fighting it out for the Crypto Cup. Yes, the prize fund consists of a couple of hundred thousand dollars plus a couple of bitcoins so the players can watch the value of those bitcoins fluctuate throughout the tournament. It's all good fun. Um, I'm going to show you, I think, a really, really nice game between Alan Pichot and Anish Giri. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Let's try and hit that 100k. And do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links down there. Right, Pichot against Giri. Now, I'm particularly interested in this game because Anish Giri plays the Kalashnikov variation of the Sicilian. Now, at the moment, I'm actually writing a course on the Kalashnikov, a repertoire for black, which will be coming out on Chessable uh, fairly soon, as soon as I finished it, basically. Um, and this so-called Kalashnikov variation is an opening that I played as a kid way before I was playing Sveshnikovs and Nidorfs. But this was one of the, my first ever chess openings and I've gone back to it. Um, and it's it's fascinating looking up all the these old variations again. Uh, Pichot plays, I think, the best move, knight b5. So that knight wants to come in to d6. Now, the old move was a6. That's the so-called Lerventhal variation. Probably not very good for black. But d6 is the Kalashnikov variation. And now white can just bring the knight out. But c4 is, well, quite a, a trenchant move, basically saying, right, I'm going to squash black in the middle. Black is never going to be able to break out with d5. So white has this kind of Marozzi bind and black has already committed that pawn to e5 but now this is I find this really interesting because the, the old way of playing this was to push the knight back and then play the bishop to e7 and then bring out to g5 to exchange bishops some of you might recall the game between Magnus Carlsen and Ho, Magnus Carlsen and the Ho Fan from the Tata Steel tournament a few years ago where Magnus really played a beautiful positional squeeze as white and won a nice game. But the, the modern interpretation of this variation is to play g6. So, And this is exactly what I will be recommending in my course. Um, so this is just far more dynamic, basically, putting the bishop to g7. Now, in some ways, it's quite an old move. But in the old days, I said the old days, sort of 10 years ago, everyone used to play with knight e7 and go for f5. You know, castles on f5, a bit like a, a king's Indian, really. But actually, with, with the centre almost sort of open and fluid, it just doesn't work. But knight f6, as Giri played in this game, has come to the fore, and this has been popularised by a few players, notably uh, the Iranian player Parham Aksudlu, um, who's had very good results with this, actually. And, well, let, let's see how this game goes, because although it might not look anything special at the moment, actually black gets really dynamic play. Let's see how Giri managed to achieve that. So rook c8. And this is typical of these kind of positions. Black is looking to get some pressure on that c4 pawn. And, you know, maybe if this knight moves here or here, pressure. And sometimes you can break out with b5 as well. f3, supporting that e pawn. So that's directed against this, this move b5. And now one could play the knight here or back to e7 to hit that pawn. But Giri plays a really interesting move, knight to h5. Now, this is really dynamic. So, well, we can see that this knight could possibly want to hop into f4, a nice outpost. But also, it opens up the bishop here. And 
it could be that that other knight sometimes hops into d4. So let's take a look. Knight d5 played by Pichot, which is, well, a very natural move. That, that knight hits the, the outpost. And now, really interesting, um, Giri simply exchanges that off for the bishop. Now, I mean, maybe Pichot didn't take this one seriously because it looks anti-positional to give up that light-squared bishop for the knight. But this is such an interesting position. Queen takes d5 played. But before we look at that, let's just have a quick look at pawn takes. And it's a kind of King's Indian position now, where Black's Rook is on the c files. That knight maybe um, is a potential target. One could drop the knight back to b8 and then around to d7. But, I mean, white is is stable enough there. But I think a really interesting move, and so typical of the Kalashnikov, black gives up a pawn. And I've seen this in so many positions. Once knight d4 comes, yes, black is a pawn down, but black has fantastic compensation here. So first of all, the knight comes into f4. Okay, the rook comes up to defend the bishop and cover g2. Now let's secure that knight here. Reminds me of a fantastic game from earlier in the year. Uh, Wojtaszek against Caruana from the Tatar Steel Tournament, which was a King's Indian, but um, Caruana um, also sacked a pawn. Um, so this pawn comes down here. And now the queen is going to come to g5, nice and active. The rook controls the open file. This bishop on e2, well, it's locked in by its own pawns that is really good compensation for black and as i said very typical of the kalashnikov anyway i digress let's look at the game queen takes d5 and this move must have come as a surprise again this move knight d4 well here it's not about sacking a pawn this is all about trapping that queen so you can see its retreat has been blocked now, what, watch what happens if this is taken. So, first of all, if bishop takes, then knight f4, forks, queen, and bishop. So, if bishop d2, okay, rook c5, let's push the queen here, sack a pawn, bishop check, king goes in the corner, can you spot it? Here we go, mate in two, bang, and bang. Thank you very much. Checkmate. That shows the dynamic potential of this opening. Uh, I mean, white could defend better, but basically that is a, a, a good line for black. So Pichot played uh, bishop d3. So obviously the bishop was attacked and the knight as well, so the bishop covers the knight. Now an excellent move. Um, it would be nice comes now. b5 is played. be nice to play queen d7 to cover the b7 pawn and then rook c5. Problem is the queen escapes. So what we do first of all is play b5. So that closes off the escape route here. So if b3 covering, then queen d7, and that does cover this important square, then rook c5. So in the game, knight takes d4, pawn takes. Again, bishop takes knight f4 is a very unpleasant fork. So bishop g5 hits the queen, queen b6, and that covers the b7 square and the d6 square. So you can see the queen is now in massive trouble, and there is basically no way out for white. Um, pawn takes pawn played, rook c5, queen retreats, and the bishop drops. Simple as that. Black is a piece up. Now, it's still a little bit tricky because white now has that pass pawn on a6. However, what's interesting is that Geary manages to connect, to connect his pieces on the king side somehow with the rest of the board. Watch how he does it. Does it. Knight f4 hits the bishop and hits g2. Bishop moves. Rook takes... And rook takes b2. And this leaves white's king in a desperate situation. 
even if Black had to give up a whole rook for that pawn, then I think Black would still have a fantastic position, actually, as it happens. If a7, then the rook can just block, and actually there's no danger. Um, so white is lost here. Um, the game went to rook b1, rook c2, maintaining that rook on the wonderful 7th rank. And now d3 opens up that beautiful bishop down there. Rook takes, bishop takes, rook. Black is still a piece up. And once that bishop enters the game, just ensuring that white's pawn is not going to advance. Also, closing in on the king so that king is really in, in a, a poor situation. Minor pieces need good outposts. As long as they get good outposts, then everything is fine. I mean, here, if white takes this pawn, then black just cleans up. Once that bishop goes, this drops. Easy win. H4 played, giving the king a little bit of room, but it's too little, too late. And now Giri plays very nicely, making sure that knight is maintained on that wonderful square. The king moves into the middle, protecting the knight. And, well, white has nothing left in this position. You can still take that pawn, but after the exchange of knight for bishop, that pawn will drop. Otherwise, white can't do anything, and black is just going to play moves like here. Um, and open up the king side and get through to the king. And actually, it'll be mate very quickly in that kind of position. So, uh, very convincing victory from Giri. Some really nice tactics. And yes, I was very intrigued to see this Kalashnikov variation. And particularly with this trendy way of playing with bishop g7. It's really dynamic. So there'll be more chess coming from the Crypto Cup. I love the name. Um, over the next few days, um, Magnus Carlsen not doing, not having a great first day. He's on 50%. Anish Giri in the lead on his own with four out of five in this first day in, this pre in these preliminary rounds. Thanks for watching.